Good afternoon students. Today we're going to be covering a lesson from our course Helping Christians Grow which is dealing with the principles of Christian education. And we're going to be looking at a task development from lesson number seven this week which is going to speak about guiding the learning experience. So this is going to be one of the ways that we help to make disciples and to help them to grow through effective Christian education. And so this week, as we take a look at our lesson development from the teaching task, we're going to cover the objective about how the teaching task is defined so that we can understand what it means to teach and what teaching involves and how we can be effective at the teaching task. Now, in our last lesson, we discussed wholeness based on faith. That is lesson number six of the course, Making Disciples, Helping Christians Grow. And if you would like to get your study guide and review lesson six to look at how we discuss wholeness based on faith. And as we saw, wholeness develops as we gain Bible knowledge which includes many basic facts and deeper doctrinal truths. Just as food is to the physical body, so is biblical content to spiritual life. In fact, it is the source of faith according to Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So we find that wholeness requires not only knowledge, but also the application of this knowledge to everyday life situations. And as we grow in knowledge and apply it consistently, we develop a lifestyle that is characterized by faith. So what is the value of growing in faith, students? What difference does it make if we develop spiritually? gain stature in the faith, and know many biblical facts. Well, in this development, we'll find that the gaining this knowledge is not the end in itself. By no means is this the goal of Christian maturity, just to develop spiritually, just to gain stature in faith, and to know many biblical facts. For our lives are not lived in isolation. These are all a means to the goal of Christian maturity, children of God. If we look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, we are admonished to grow in grace, to become workers who correctly handle the word of truth. You'll see that reference in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And we are also to be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks us to give the reason for the hope that we have. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. So students, we need to understand that we are saved to serve others in the body of Christ, especially those who are spiritual babes. Our own growing experiences and our knowledge of God's word enable us to teach others and therefore strengthen the body of Christ and make possible its growth and extension. Now I made reference to lesson six earlier where we examined the informal pattern of Christian nurture. And we saw that whereas much learning takes place informally in the home and neighborhood in the natural process, which is called socialization. So in the spiritual realm, we learn that the Christ life, by imitating the attitudes and behavior of more mature Christians, that we finally are able to discuss the importance of our own character development. 
the character development we need to discuss and understand as a means of becoming the kind of persons that others want to imitate. So now let us con consider some formal patterns of Christian nurturing. So in this lesson, we will study how to teach biblical truth through teaching learning activities in the classroom setting. Many of you are studying these courses through our self-study independent program and the study guide is written in such a way where it guides you just as an instructor would in the classroom. So at page 180 of our study guide, Look at the bottom of the page, you'll see the teaching task defined. We're going to look at that section now. And we're going to talk about objective one, which is two statements which identify correctly the teaching task and explain why learning involves change. Now, we have seen that the teaching task is, is more than imparting information. It is more than telling or talking. Telling a story, stating facts, describing events, or explaining information may not necessarily equal effective teaching. We need to understand that if one learns, teaching is apparently effective, and if no one learns, teaching is apparently ineffective. So at this point, we must analyze the problem. If we're, if our students are not learning, if those that we are communicating with are not growing and able to put the information into practical use, then our teaching is ineffective. And if that is true, then we need to analyze the problem. Some of the questions we may have is, has the teacher failed to communicate effectively because he or she used poor teaching methods? Has he or she appealed to only one of the senses and failed to enhance their students' learning experiences by ignoring the seeing, hearing, and interacting opportunities that tend to enrich the learning experience? For example, the saying, a salesman has not sold a product until the customer has made a purchase, is somewhat appropriate for the teaching learning experience. If, for example, the learner doesn't learn effectively, then our teaching is ineffective or faulty. You see, one doesn't just deliver a lecture or teach a lesson and assume that learning will occur automatically. Teaching and learning are so vitally intertwined that to be meaningful, one cannot be effective unless the other is. Truth should not be dispensed in a tasteless way, and it cannot be imposed on a learner. Students cannot be forced to learn. So how then should the teaching task be done? That's what we want to examine in this section of our lesson review. One of the points we want to emphasize with you or that we want to re-emphasize from an earlier point, and that point was that the learner must interact with the material and discover truth for themselves if the learning experience is to be meaningful to them. You see, no teacher can do that for the learner. However, truth can be discovered under the right guidance and leadership of a teacher. Teachers, therefore, are guides in the per process of learning. The teaching task is to facilitate learning, to help learners learn. Now, the learner must integrate the new material, how it relates to them and apply it to their own lives. And they must also bring 
their life into harmony with the truth that they discover. And this is why we say change is essential to learning. Therefore, the teacher is a change agent. When change is demonstrated in attitudes, values, and behavior, then we know that learning has occurred. You see, both the learner and the teacher play important roles in the teaching learning process. If you look at your study guide, you will see on page 181 at the bottom, the following chart that shows each role and the relationship of each to the other. If you're away from your study guide now, you can have, if you have a blank sheet of paper available, you can uh, draw a line down the middle of your page. And on the left hand side, you can put the teaching responsibilities. And on the right hand side, you can list the learning responsibilities. So under the teaching responsibilities, you can list the following. Motivate interaction, stimulate curiosity and organized material. Under the learning side, you can place interact with the material. The second thing you can list under teaching responsibilities is to guide discovery and prescribe appropriate activities. And under the learning side, you can list discover truth for oneself. Through the guided discovery and the appropriate activities, learners can discover the truth for oneself. This is why we emphasize the self-study model or the independent study model that we follow through our school. Okay, let's go to a third point under teaching responsibilities. Ask life-related questions. Give examples which are life-related and pose life-related problems. And on the learning side, you can list make personal applications of truth to one's own life. We're talking about the teaching tasks as part of the process of helping Christians grow or foundations for discipleship. Here's a fourth Point that we can list under teaching responsibilities. Support, suggest, correct, pray, and trust God. Under the learning opportunities or responsibilities, we can list bring one's life into harmony with truth. So, and that illustration is giving us a Breakdown of the teaching responsibilities and the learner or learning responsibilities. So you see both have responsibilities if teaching and learning is to be effective. We also can see from this lesson that the teaching task involves creating an environment in which learning can take place. It also involves motivating learning and guiding discovery. Teaching involves structuring opportunities in which learning can occur. It includes planning activities, which will enable the student to encounter and interact with the material and designing experiences, which lead to change. So remember we talked about that learning involves change. And so in order to bring about the desired change, that is to move learners from their present level to that desired by the teacher, the teacher must do four things. One, determine what the learners know. And often this is accomplished by means of a pretest or a quiz. Secondly, specify learning objectives. Third, prescribe learning activities that lead to the fulfillment of the objectives. And fourth, evaluate progress. So you see each of these tasks outlined in your study guide. You see in the beginning of your study guide, it lists 
certain things that you can do for self-study and check your answers. We give you objectives for each of the sections of your lesson. Talks about activities, that questions that you answer, some of the visual aids that you can request from your uh, instructor or from the school. And then we evaluate progress through our exams. So again, the teaching task must involve four things. A pre-test, quiz. We must specify the objectives. We must prescribe learning activities and then evaluate progress. And so if we do these four things, we are well on our way to helping Christians grow by guiding the learning experience for them. This is one of the ways that we can reach the goal of this course, which is foundations for making disciples or helping Christians grow. And today we talked about the teaching task. So take the time to review uh, this material. If you'd like to get a copy of the visual aids, uh, feel free to reach out to us at the school email address. We'll send you a copy of the visual aids for each of your lessons, as well as any activity or exercises that pertain to each lesson. So feel free to interact with us. Uh, there are times where we do live chat sessions, usually on the weekends. Feel free to contact us to schedule or, or arrange a live chat session if you have any specific questions that have not been addressed. But I certainly pray that this short lesson review of the course Foundations for Making Disciples, Helping Christians Grow, specifically Objective 1 of our unit from Lesson 7 about guiding the learning experience. Feel free to reach out to us, students. Hopefully this lesson will be something that you can apply to your own personal life. That you can interact with the material in the right way. That you will search the scriptures and review the material in your study guide to discover the truth for yourself. And also you want to make sure that whatever truths you discover, you want to bring your life into harmony with the truth that you discover. God bless and prosper you students. We look forward to our next session. In the meantime, may you be blessed and prosperous every day.